Blenheim Palace was completed in 1722, built by a grateful country to honour a national hero, John Churchill, 1st Duke of Marlborough. Here, another great son of the House of Marlborough was born, Winston Churchill. And now, at the first post-war fete held at Blenheim, some 60,000 people came to hear him speak. Only recently recovered from his illness, Mr Churchill had chosen this occasion for his return to the political arena and he addressed the huge gathering for about an hour. Referring to government measures to meet the present grave crisis, he said, We shall accept, support and endure any and all sensible proposals, however severe, which are truly made in the national interest. We, we shall support them, not only in Parliament, but in our daily lives and work. On the other hand, we shall oppose any proposals which we deem unwise or unnecessary, or which are inserted for the purpose of pandering to class jealousy and party spite. But what can be thought of a government which has drifted on from day to day until the loan is nearly exhausted. What can be thought of them? There is not one proposal that Mr. Attlee can make on Wednesday that would not have been far more effective if made a year or six months ago. That is my first main charge against the Socialist Minister. Why wait till the twelfth hour is near before taking the measures which every prudent housewife would have taken in her own home as soon as she understood what was happening? I will turn before I close to wider fields which nonetheless deeply influence our island fortunes. The foundation of British policy must be an ever closer association with the United States. I have never at any time suggested an alliance. <coughs> I want something much more than that. We must seek something less precise and, and more potent. The whole English-speaking world must move forward together in fraternal association along the lines of destiny. After re-emphasizing the need for a united Europe, Mr. Churchill ended, Ladies and gentlemen, I trust these thoughts will become facts and not merely dreams and aspirations. For I am sure that here is the path, both at home and abroad, along which we should persevere with malice to none and with hope for all.